Is it live? I think so. Welcome everyone. My name is Chris and we're here with artist palette Durham region, of course. And we are going to be drawing and painting this one right here. I called it Lofty Living. I think we all know uh, where the inspiration came from for Lofty Living. We are going to be using a number of media. This is a mixed media piece because we have watercolor, we have pen, we have buttons. Um, we even have like maybe a little bit of acrylic too in the white, the little white highlights in there. So uh, definitely a mixed media piece, which is my favorite. I don't like to limit myself to just one medium. I always have to throw in a little, little pen, a little acrylic to finalize the little touches. But the buttons, that's a new thing, working with these buttons. Uh, so hopefully this week you were able to kind of source some buttons, whether they are new buttons you purchased or maybe you scrounged around the, the old sewing box and got some buttons. Um, I've got quite a few with me that we'll take a look at. All right, let's see how many people we got small handful of people. Um, I will go over the supplies in a moment. Let me know in the live chat there uh, where you're from. Maybe um, if this is your first event with me, Chris, or your first with Artist Palette Durham Region. Let me know. Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe you're celebrating something today. Welcome to Sheila from Michigan and Judy in Northern California. And hello to Barbara. Good to see you. Um, yeah, while, while a few more people log in, tune in, um, I'll go over the supplies. And this is a live stream, but you are able to put the playback back. You can rewind and pause during a live stream. It's, uh, it's wonderful what you can do with technology. <clears throat> So if you do miss something or you need to run and grab something or take a break, just hit pause and there you go. No worries. You don't have to, you know, keep up with my pace per se. So let's look at some supplies that I have in the shot here. And also I have a few off screen, um, some buttons. So these buttons, I love that sound. Those came from Amazon, just some basic colors, all the same shape though. So that's, that's okay, but a little bit boring. And then I got these buttons from my mother-in-law. She had a sewing kit and just kind of accumulated all these buttons. So I've got all kinds of shapes and textures and colors. There's a square one in there, big ones, small ones. So I'll probably use a nice, uh, mixture of the two uh, bags of buttons I have here. You can see in this one, in the original image, I just had the, the Amazon buttons, but uh, today I added a few more fancy buttons just to make it a little bit more uh, interesting to look at with some of those unique one-of-a-kind buttons. Let's put that here. Let's put these up to the side. Those will be much later. I have a pencil and an eraser. We're going to draw the house from scratch. So there's no um, outline that you like download or print or anything. We're just gonna do it together from scratch, that house. So a pencil and an eraser is very useful. I've got a bit of masking tape, that's optional. If you want like a crisp white border around the edge, masking tape. I have my watercolor paper. Now you could do this tutorial with a completely different medium. What if you want to do acrylic on a canvas? You totally could do that and adapt uh, the instructions to do a different medium. Colored pencils. You could draw the house and then colored in with colored pencils, pencil crayons, uh, markers, uh, pastels even would look lovely. Maybe even a digital version would look really cool. So here's my watercolor paper that I'll use today. Canson XL. I use it a lot. 
let's put that here for a moment. I've got a variety of pens. Um, the pen that you use today must be waterproof, a waterproof pen, because we're going to do the pen drawing before we do all the watercolor work. And you wouldn't want it to just smudge and run and bleed everywhere. So I've got a couple brands to show you that I like to use a lot. These are ultra fine point pens by Amazon Basics. Amazon has their own sort of brand of products. So I've got these ultra fine point Amazon pens. These ones are very popular. The Micron, Pigma Micron pens. Uh, you've seen people use these a lot probably in tutorial videos. You can get them in like different sizes. Oh, where's my camera? The sizes are on the lids there, different sizes. Um, oh, we lost our focus. Focus on these pens. Le Pen technical drawing pens. These are also permanent, waterproof. You can get them in different sizes. And these, also a favorite of mine, uh, Sharpie. They make, of course, the standard Sharpie markers, but they also make a variety of different pens, fine points, felt tip pens. So I'm going to use, I'll probably use these. These are among my favorites. Um, if you don't know if your pen is waterproof, maybe scribble a little bit of pen on a piece of scrap paper let it dry for a minute and then take a brush with some water and see if it runs and bleeds when you add water to it. There's some pens there. I do of course have some watercolors right here. Any set of watercolors will do even your most basic set with maybe eight, 10, 12 colors from Crayola. You could totally do this with the most basic set of colors. So I've got this one by Mei Liang, also from Amazon. <laughs> Everything I buy is from Amazon. Oh my gosh. I just realized that. Um, optional, I do have some white paint pens or white acrylic from the dollar store to give me those little highlights in the windows, these little white highlights. It's so small, such a tiny detail that you could totally skip that and it would be just fine. White paint pens or white acrylic. Uh, of course, I have some brushes and I've got some water for my watercolors, paper towel. I grabbed a couple brushes. I grabbed, I'll probably do most of the house with this guy here. It's a size eight. Um, it has a bit of a pointy tip. That'll be good for the house. And then for the sky, something bigger, maybe grab one of your biggest brushes. Um, so this is kind of like a big watercolor brush, but even something like this, like a big flat, we just want to get a lot of paint in this big sky, like all at once. So something nice and big like that would do. And then the last supply um, to adhere our buttons, to keep those buttons in place, either some super glue or crazy glue or a hot glue gun. I've got mine already warming up off to the side here. Hot glue, super glue to keep those buttons on there. Okay, so we are going to draw the house first. So get out. Um, I do like to take my paper out of the pad, but that's me. You don't have to take it out of the pad necessarily. Uh, let's put you, put you right here, not quite off the screen. Let's put you right here. Hello to Heather from Sarnia. You're about an hour from me. I'm in London. And Sheila, not her first time with me. Excellent. Good to see you again, Sheila. Hello, Nancy and Mark. And Vicky is from Washington State. Super. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get a pencil, let's get an eraser. I will, um, I will put tape around mine so I get a nice crisp uh, edge. Um, it's up to you if you want that white edge around the outside or not. Um, I did, this is slightly smaller than this. So I'm gonna just put my tape like right on there like that. But if you want like a smaller white edge like this, have your tape sort of like 
off the page. You could even tape your paper to your table and that might help with any like wiggling or warping. There we go. Nancy is saying that she's watching us today because she couldn't get the watercolor paper. Um, yeah, you could even do this tutorial on say a, a canvas. I have often done a watercolor on a canvas. It is possible. It has a, a unique um, effect as it dries. You might get even, even more of those kind of watercolor shapes on a canvas. It just dries differently because it doesn't like suck into the paper, if you know what I mean. But yeah, definitely watch along with us tonight. And then um, when you source the paper you want, this video will be on our channel forever. So no worries about it um, disappearing. It'll be available for years and years. So I've got my tape here. I just like to press sort of the inner edge a little bit, not too hard. I do want the tape to come off later on. Just the inner edge is where the paint might escape, you know, underneath. Okay, pencil, come back here, eraser. Now, um, I mentioned we, we all know where this image was inspired by, right? You don't have to do this house. You can do any house you want. You could invent a house with any number of doors and windows and floors. Um, it could be your own house, right? If you, maybe you don't have a photo of your own house, go on Google Maps. Your house is right there and do a little sketch of your house. Or if you wanna gift this to someone, put their house. Wouldn't that be cool? And you could still do like cool colors but just base the, the house shape on someone's house in real life. Just saying, doesn't, yeah. What if you wanna do something completely different? A, a Volkswagen bus mm -hmm. flying up, uh, a tent, maybe you like to go camping. Um, you know, literally anything could be attached to these balloons floating up. I wanna see, I wanna see someone do something like absolutely crazy, something very cool. Oh yeah, make it a heart. Yeah, this this shape, this could be a heart shape of balloons. Um, my buttons kind of go like off the page, so to speak. But you could have your buttons if you have like less buttons. Maybe have your buttons like in a circle like this, or a heart, like Nancy said. You could totally do that. I I will I will demonstrate this house though. That makes the most sense, but definitely sketch whatever house you want if you want to. Um, I'm not even going to use a ruler, right? If you want to use a ruler, go ahead. I'm kind of a, you know, fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. I'm going to start with maybe like a rectangle um, for this portion of the house, a rectangle. Then I'll put the roof on it, and then we'll add sort of this front area and it doesn't have to be in the center it could be a little left little right don't worry if it's like not the same size as mine yours could be bigger or smaller if if you want to grab a ruler if that makes you more comfortable go ahead so here's sort of a rectangle here it is right here yours could be bigger or smaller I'm going to put uh, this purple roof on top. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Even mine is not true to the inspiration, if you will. There's a little basic roof. You know, every kid in grade one drew a house like this. And then if you look at like the proportion of say the porch, we'll call this the porch area here. And then we'll call this area maybe like the front room. This is the front room of the house. It's kind of half and half, sort of, a little bit. 
So maybe let's do a little line, just a light line to remind us. Half front room, half front porch. All right. Um, the, the front room, it kind of, um, it's coming out at us. This window is like closer to us and these ang these are on an angle because the the front room's come coming out at us. So I'm gonna do some angled lines here and here. It's not quite all the way to the very edge. I'm gonna have like a little bit of siding here. So maybe a little bit like that. So this part will be siding. The front room kind of comes out at us. That's why it kind of dips down like that. And I'll just erase that bit because I don't need that bit. This part is more 3D. It's coming out at us. And then I'll put some lines kind of coming up here. They're not perfectly straight. They're not, you know, perfectly even. And that's okay. Let's see, I'm going to go to about here. Maybe about there. So this will be the start of this orange bit. If your proportions aren't exactly the same as mine, it's okay. It's all right. There's a bit of orange trim, this little bit of trim here. And then from this, this is where we go up, up to this tall peak. Where should the tall peak end up? Maybe about here. I make a little dot. If you make a little dot as like your goal, where you want the top to be, that might help. So first it comes sort of up like a curve. And then a nice big triangle, big like that. Use a ruler if you like. I try to keep the angles the same, keep the length sort of the same. <clears throat> and just to keep things tidy, I just want to erase some of those inner lines that I don't need anymore. And I've given my, um, this big roof here, sort of like three lines to give it a bit of like trim because it's not just like, you know, a line. There's a thickness to a roof. Give your roof a thickness trim yeah mine's messy my lines aren't straight and that's okay that's all right oh see every time I do that I lose the focus a little bit focus on focus on this yeah there we go just needs to be shown what to focus on. Okay, so I've got um, that big, um, like a loft bedroom maybe is up there. Let's just get some more basic shapes. A little, what would you call that? A little gable, a little gable. Something like that. Let's give that gable a window. We'll give this guy a window too. A 
little square window, little rectangle window, or whatever shape. You, do you want to do an oval window? That can be kind of cute. Oval. A balloon-shaped window. That could be a thing. I'm not drawing, like, every single detail yet in the pencil. Just get your basic shapes in here for the house, and then when we go over this with pen, pen it all in. Then we'll add, you know, the, the trim of the window. So there's the basic shape of the window. Let's look at the porch here. So there's the part of the porch we stand on. So maybe something like here. That line would be like the floor that we stand on when we're standing on the porch. So the door would meet that line. Any, any size, any shape, it could be uh, a door that has maybe a rounded top. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Something like that. And there's a little window over here. There's also these big um, supports. That would be the word for that. So there's a support here. Uh, I'm going to put it right here. Big, tall support all the way down to the ground. Nice, big, long support. And there's another support um, just next to the door. Let's go right here. Supporting posts right there. Um, below the door would be where the stairs are. And I've just done them as horizontal stripes and there's like a little, um, little post, I guess that would be like the, where, where the railing is, you put your hand on that little post here. And just some horizontal stripes to be the stairs. Any any number, whatever makes sense. Yeah, my stairs aren't even evenly spaced. Look at that, S fat, skinny, that one's real fat. That's all right. What else little details? Let's do, there's like some, oh, some kind of a lattice work up here on the porch. I don't want to draw every single line of that, but I'll just put like the main cross beam here. And there's a little fence on the porch so you don't fall off the porch. There's a little window, I'll put a little square here for a window. So what else can we put in basic shapes? Maybe the the three windows, the basic shapes of those. Again, if yours are, if your house is bigger, smaller, certain sections are bigger, smaller than mine, that's all right. Let's put some windows here. So these side windows are on an angle. So you have to kind of angle your top and bottom lines. You have an eraser. You can adjust anything you need to adjust. I'm going to put, there's like a little, like a little bit of, I don't know, like a little mini roof at the side here. And then this will be siding here. Um, I don't have my chimney yet. Right kind of in the center is kind of where the chimney is. That's good. So it kind of evenly carries the load of the house on the balloons. Very believable. Put 
Let's have a look here. So this is what I have for my basic sketch. If you wanted to pause your screen, like on this shot, you could do that and tweak your sketch a little bit. You can rewind to see any of those parts I drew again, or you can pause it on this screen and look at this house as you sketch. But uh, yeah, don't bother trying to sketch every single little shingle, every bit of trim, because you're gonna do that with the, with the pen. Why, why waste your time? So yeah, that's all I'm gonna draw with the pencil. Let's get our pen. Let's put this here for later. Um, my favorite pen, which one? It's pretty good. I'm just testing some on a little scrap paper. This one's pretty good. Got my waterproof pen. Again, waterproof because we're gonna do the watercolors afterwards and we don't want any big smudgy messes. So, <clears throat> house details. Again, you could pause it on the screen here and kind of work at it on your own, at your own time. You can see that my lines are messy. They're a little bit scribbly. They're not perfect. Um, not everything is the same thickness. You've got some thick and thin rungs, trim, and it's okay because people aren't looking at your art like this close and saying, oh, look at that, uh, that scribble up there. No, they're looking at it maybe on a wall, maybe in a beautiful frame from a distance, and they're just impressed with the colors and the, the buttons. Yeah, that's what they're gonna be looking at, the buttons. So if your house is a little scribbly, it's, it's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna just start outlining everything and adding detail along the way. So, and sometimes I don't even have my pen exactly follow my pencil lines because, you know, get a little bit of a shake in the hand. So like right here when I was doing the pen, it didn't exactly line up with the pencil and, and that's all right, that's okay. And I'll often do double lines, triple lines so there's no way it's going to be perfect. There we go. I'm going around this kind of roof area a second time. And the lines don't perfectly match up. Yeah, like look, look right here. Those don't match up at all. It's all scribbly here. And that's okay. adds, I think, a nice character. It's certainly a distinctive style. And I will add like the hint of shingles to this roof line. So don't just go straight down, make like jaggedy shapes as if it's shingles. Kind of reminds me of a Christmas tree, a little bit. This is like a little jaggedy down the sides because we're looking at like shingles from the side, not like this.
And any pencil lines that don't get covered with pen, we're going to erase those so they won't be visible afterwards. It'll be tidier. Oh, you could add other things to this house, like, like a cute window box, like flowers in a window box, or maybe like a lantern by the door, or any other decor elements you want to add. Give your windows trim, give your windows curtains if you like. In the windows, I just did sort of the horizontal kind of frame bit, but you could do like the cross, like a lot of windows will have like the cross bit of frame. That's a cute look. And again, it's okay if it's scribbly, messy. Yeah, have a look at what I've got so far. I don't think there's a single straight line in there at all. Got some darker parts, lighter parts. What else could you put in the windows? I mentioned like you could have curtains in the windows. Um, maybe like, like, oh, they had like a piggy bank. You know, they were saving up their money. A little piggy bank in the window. Or um, <laughs> maybe like in the window you could see like a helium canister. That'd be a funny little detail. My little gable, tiny little gable. This one's a little bit bigger. That's okay. If I can't even out my staircase, it's all uneven. Let's see if I can get them a little, a little more uniform. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, you definitely could be, you know, getting out a ruler and doing every single line with a ruler, but where's the fun in that? This is casual, quick, fast, fun. A little door trim or not. You don't have to have trim around your door. Door knob, yes. Door panels. Lots of doors have panels. Hmm. 
Facebook. <clears throat> Getting there. Ooh, that's a wonky support beam. If my support beam on my house was that wonky, I'd be concerned, but this is just a drawing. Go. Railing. And then all the other little lines and details that you could add. So I've got like this kind of upper trellis here, these stripes here, these little railings so you don't fall off the porch, little details like this panel here, um, siding details, these little kind of trimmy bits, siding lines, oh, shingles, all this very cool kind of fish scale kind of shingles or these sort of wider kind of things or any other details. If you want to do maybe bricks, you can do a little brick sketch here. Maybe do um, some decor, like maybe like flower decorations or um, a lot of people have like a like a metal something on their wall, like a star or a, maybe something patriotic or. Anything at all. Guess we don't have like the the hose. He he had a hose reel attached to the house, and they had like a hose coming. Maybe it hasn't unraveled yet. Maybe they're still in the house. It hasn't unraveled. That's the explanation. Why we don't see the hose. Yeah, anything on, on these two little side window bits needs to be on an angle to give that illusion of 3D. So if you're drawing some siding here, they have to be on an angle. Look at, look at my lines. They're light, messy, sketchy, wiggly. A lot of double lines and triple lines. Uh, we've got these little, little rectangles there for some reason. Yeah, if I add anything, go for it. Get some kind of siding kind of lines here. Sort of like siding. Get some siding lines over here. Very light. These sort of fish scale kind of shingles, like a semicircle. It's the letter U, the letter U, the letter U, the letter U. And mine aren't all the same length. Yeah, 
trying my best to kind of keep them in even rows, but it's okay if they're a little wonky. Yeah, just think of it, the letter U, the letter U, the letter U, the letter U. Here, bring that up a little closer if you wanted to sort of pause it like that. <coughs> And um, the, the sort of the bigger roof. I did sort of like lines. Lines like that and then shingles kind of between those lines. Or any shingle design. These are also sort of like a U shape. Yeah, mine are messy, not exactly the same shape and size. That's okay. Yeah, let's have a look here. Is that it's not even perfectly square. It's a little bit on an angle. I'm not worried. I will add like a little bit like of extra scribbles here and there just for just to intentionally kind of mess it up. You know what I mean? Because it, it is a choice, it is a style to have these kind of extra lines. And I've done it a lot in a lot of tutorials, so you've seen me do it before. And no one will know what are the actual mistakes and what is on purpose. Yeah, I like that. Cute. And then the um, sort of next step, we're going to fill in the, the black of the windows. You could do the black of the windows with the watercolor, watercolor paint, black in there. I just like the look of the scribbly pen in all of these windows. So from a distance, it looks just straight black. But if you look really close, you can see little bits of white where I didn't fully fill in the scribble. So just literally scribble inside all the windows, avoiding any, like if you have any framework, like a cross beam there, or maybe you did the, the cross like this in the window, avoid covering up those. Just get it as black as you can. Yeah, and it'll start to look better, even with just these filled in. It just gives it such a nice high contrast with the dark, dark.
scribble it all in. And let's say you don't get it as dark as you want it to be. You can always get some black paint and fill that in, in addition to the scribble. But that, I think I did a pretty good job getting it nice and dark. And sort of later as the last step, we'll add like the white highlight to make it look as if it's glass and not just a dark hole. So if you look at like look at this half of the drawing, it's okay. But then this, it just seems like to pop more with those dark darks. So I'll get some of these little windows. But I'll leave the door and I'll paint the door a color. Unless you want like the door to have a window in it. You could do that. It's kind of cute. Do I want the door to have a window? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm considering it. But yeah, that's looking good. And I guess the last thing with the pen would be to add a whole bunch of strings, balloon strings. Again, you could use a ruler for this. But I think I did a pretty good job making them fairly straight without using a ruler. Um, but what I did was I turned the whole thing around. I'm going to flip this like this. I find it's easier to do straight lines coming down this way than going up. If, if I was going up, probably a lot of them would be curved because your hand tends to kind of curve like this. So draw them downwards. And yeah, I kind of focus them here kind of thing. Hmm, what would be good? Maybe if I took my pencil, I'm just gonna do a light pencil line where I want the balloons to go later. I want the balloons to kind of be in this zone. If you did want, like, um, you could do the balloons like, like a circle like this. It doesn't have to be like off the page. I guess it could be a heart shape. It could be really any shape, maybe a letter. Like I could do the letter C for Chris. But yeah, I just did a light line here of where I want the balloons, the buttons to be, sort of right here. So that might help me when I'm doing all these strings this pull 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 and yeah some of them could be like longer and go up up here some could be shorter they don't have to all go off the page they could crisscross each other of course And you could flip it back this way and check once in a while, like, is that enough? Does that seem like enough? 
or do you need a few more? Really, I don't think you could have too many. There's so many buttons, so many balloons up here that you could just have it just chock full of strings. It's okay if some of them are a little, little wiggly, not perfectly straight. You be the judge how many is like the right amount. Let me see here. Maybe a few more, but I think I'm getting close to a good amount. And there could be gaps. I think it might be where I want it to be. That looks pretty good. I don't think I need too many more. But you do you. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. That's really all the pens. He's done his job. Um, I will take an eraser and lightly erase any visible pencil um, if your pen takes a moment or two to dry, especially those really blackened parts. Give that a little time. But some of the first things we outline should be okay to not smudge. Because even though these are like permanent pens, they do take a second to dry. So far, no smudges. Even if there is a smudge, we're going to brightly color this. It's going to camouflage it. No one's going to see it. There we go. Yep. Pretty good. I didn't have any smudges, so I'm lucky. Yep. Even if a little pencil still is showing, the colors are going to distract from that anyway. Super. Awesome. Let's, I think we're going to do our sky first. All this big, beautiful, blue, cloudy sky before we do, say, all the house colors. Um, you can do a different sky than I'm going to do. I'm going to do the blue. What if you did beautiful sunset colors? Hmm? Or um, maybe no clouds, maybe bigger clouds. Um, you could paint a rainbow. Do a rainbow, do like blue, blue, rainbow. It is pretty rainbowy. A rainbow would fit with the theme for sure. Let's get, so I've got my water, my paper towel. I'm going to use probably this giant big brush just to get a lot of wet watercolor down quickly. Um, something like that could work too. And even if you can't work like quick enough to get like the whole thing wet all at once and not have parts of it dry, that's okay because we're going to be dabbing at it with a, a Kleenex or paper towel. So you could use paper towel or tissue, like Kleenex, to remove the paint. That's how we get the clouds. So if you think you might not be able to do it like quick enough, fill it all in quick enough, you could do sections. You could do maybe a quarter of it with the blue paint and then dab the clouds and then do another quarter and then dab the clouds. So we're gonna remove paint to get those cloudy shapes. So here's my wet brush. Which color blue will I like? Maybe, because I have so many. They actually do pop out. Can I pop this one out? Maybe not. I like to put, well, 
can't see it because it's a little off camera. Right. I like to put my paint in my lid, right in the lid there, and then add more water. You want it real watery, real blue. Lots of water. Any shade of blue would work. This is more like a like a phalo blue, kind of a cooler blue. Ultramarine would totally work. That's more of a warm blue, a little purpley-ish. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Lots of water, more water. So avoid getting blue on your house, right? That makes sense. So let's see, that's a beautiful shade of blue. Yeah, yours could be lighter, darker. It's okay if some patches are sort of more condensed, darker patches, lighter patches. If a little bit gets onto your house, not a problem. That's okay. We can put some bright colors on top of it and it'll be very distracting. And we can paint right over top of our strings. All these strings, you could just paint right over top of those. Going around the house everything just soaking wet. My paper is definitely going to be kind of bumpy, warping a little bit. That's all right. Those little hills and valleys might even help us create some darker patches, lighter patches. Whoop, come back here, you. Avoid the chimney. Yeah, if you have any tight little areas like this, there and you want to switch to a smaller brush, just use the very corner. There we go. Yeah, a little paint got on my roof. That's all right. Get this all nice and filled in, nice and wet. Still very wet. Some little patches might start to dry on you. Just throw a little more wet paint over there. And then we're gonna dab. We're gonna dab it with a tissue or paper towel. Have some of that handy. I'm gonna take paint away. And everyone will have mixed results. Everyone's is gonna be different. Mine is gonna be different than even my own right here. And that's fine. There we go. Yeah, if some areas are starting to dry, just get a little bit more water, get a little more paint. But not every every inch of this sky has to have clouds on it, so that's fine. Okay. All right, so I've got a good little coat of blue. And it's still wet. Again, could be lighter, could be darker. That's a good amount. Everything's soaking. Look how wet that is. You can see the shine. There we go. Tissue. Um, let me try just like scrunching it into a ball. You could kind of scrunch it into like a log shape, ball shape. See what works. And literally just, you know, press it into some wet and lift. And then I like to like kind of rotate it in different angles, press and lift, press and lift. Uh, maybe just like a little teeny tiny little corner. Maybe roll it out more like a sausage, press and lift wherever you want. Um, it could be more of a circle, press and lift. And you could do several dabs together with that glare, that glare, there we go. If your, you know, tissue becomes like super soaked and you're not getting any lift, get a new tissue. 
press and lift. You could try like a quick press, just, just kiss it. Quick, have some off the, off the edge. And you decide how, how many clouds. Yeah, you can get like a little, like make a little tiny little pointy bit, just kind of do some little tiny little jabs. Don't focus a lot of your attention up here. This is going to be buttons. So a few, but most of your focus should be where they will actually be visible. Press and lift. Some of my clouds are getting like filled back in with paint because of these like hills and valleys. So the paint is still kind of moving and that's okay because it's going to give you different shapes. Here, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be as many as mine. Yeah, some in the corners, right at the edge. Oh, that is soaked. Whoops, <laughs> I just made a cloud because I dropped it. Um, I think. It's good, good coverage, I think. Look at that. Look at all the, the variety there. And you've got some soft blue tones in amongst the white. No two cloud is, clouds are the same. They're all unique, especially because we were kind of scrunching it in different directions. Yeah, I'm a little bit blue. Just a tiny bit. Let's put this somewhere. Let's put this here. A little bit blue. Awesome. Now we do want this to dry a few minutes um, because if we're going to start painting our house next, um, we don't want bleeds to happen. We don't want house colors to end up in the sky or sky to bleed into the house. But while we're waiting for that to dry, I would love to show you some of the um, upcoming events with me, Chris. I've got a number of uh, paid and free ones coming up. Let me show you a few of those. So generally I teach every Thursday. So today is Thursday. Next Thursday, we are doing something fun. Maybe you've heard of it before, maybe you haven't. We are going to be painting with coffee, coffee. It, it kind of behaves just like watercolors actually. So here is next Thursday's event with me. This is a paid event on Zoom. So you get the tickets on our website, artistpalettedrum.com. And then you join me on the Zoom. And Zoom is great because we can talk to each other and share our, our cameras. So you could show me how you're progressing through the Zoom and get my, you know, advice on how it's going. Um, yeah, it's a more intimate setting, I would say. So um, the ticket includes the full recording. So if you can't make the Zoom next Thursday with me, you get the full recording to do on your own time, to do forever, to keep forever. So this is made with instant coffee sort of like watercolor. And if you don't have instant coffee, you can follow along with me with the watercolor. So this one's called The Harvest Coffee Art. That's next Thursday. Uh, the following Thursday, two, two Thursdays, so September 21st, um, not a painting, but a drawing. This, again, is a paid event on Zoom. Tickets on our website. I called it uh, Peggy's Cove Turtle. It is stippling with a pen. So I'll probably use the same pen that I was using today, but this time we're doing tiny, tiny dots. So the whole thing is made of dots. And when you get a ticket to this event, you do get a printable outline of the turtle 
to have pre-sketched before the event starts. It just gives us a little head start on all the the work that goes into the stippling. All the dot. Look at the tiny dots, bigger dots, really condensed dots for the blackest blacks. It's a lot of fun. If you've never tried stippling, try this with me. You can do this whole thing yourself in two hours with me on Zoom and have this beautiful, totally ready for a frame image after just one Zoom with me. Let's put that here. Following that, uh, another paid event. I, I promise there's a free one coming up too. I do about one a month free. So here is a, something a little different. Again, I called it a 3D Black Eyed Susan. It's mixed media. So we've got paper in the form of sheet music with some paint. We're going to cut that and glue that. We have some rope or cord to make sort of that Black Eyed Susan middle. We've got acrylic on a canvas back here. I just thought something, something different. It's 3D, you could put that on your wall for fall time. You can put your hands behind that. The petals sort of, you know, feel like petals. And that will be on Zoom, tickets on the website, uh, September 28th, that's again a Thursday. Let me show you two more. Yeah, it's starting to dry. It's getting nice and dry. Little wet patches there. Um, ba -ba. Then we're getting in October already. We're already scheduling October. Um, this one is watercolor. I called it one tall latte, please. Because he's a giraffe. But it's funny that the tall latte of a certain chain is kind of like small like but it's called tall i think the the is it the trent trente that should be called tall because that's like just narrow right so this one is watercolor october 5th tickets on the website and again with this one you do get the outline of the giraffe uh, before the event to give us sort of a an edge, a head start on that one. And my next free one, so about once a month, I have a free one right here, just like we're doing here on YouTube Live. Uh, the next free one with me is October 12th, getting closer to Halloween. So of course it is Halloween themed. And for a while now, two years, I've had a ongoing series on YouTube Live of butts. Maybe you've done some of my butts series paintings before. We're continuing the series with Halloween butts. If you've been enjoying this process, the, the pencil, then the pen, then the watercolor, this event will be perfect for you. Same steps. We're going to be doing a pencil sketch, penning it, and it's that same kind of scribbly. This one's even more so. Look at how extra scribbly some of these areas are. And then we'll fill it in with watercolor. Halloween butts. How many butts can you count in here? One, two, three, four. I mean, this is kind of like a fifth, six. Look at that booty on this ghost. What a big booty. Get it, boo? So join me right here on YouTube Live, October. 12th. All of the images I just showed you, they're all on the website. All of the free ones and the paid ones are on the website. Uh, the free events, you can click to get your free ticket, and then you'll get that reminder email that many of you got uh, that are here tonight. And that's just a good way to remember to attend the live or subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Do it right now, and you will get that reminder when we go live. All right, let's see here. Little wet, little wet. I think I'm safe to start filling in some of these gorgeous colors here without like a big bleed happening. I'll use, you know, something a little smaller, something a little pointier. These colors are not true 
to the, you know, the original inspiration. So you don't have to follow these colors or these ones. Do some, do some crazy, crazy colors. Anything you want. I will start probably with my yellow. I like to always start with lighter colors first. Get a little yellow going. And because this is waterproof pen, you can just go right over all these lines without fear of smudging. So I'm gonna do all the areas yellow that I want to be yellow, and then I'll switch to a different color. Let's say maybe your water your water jar is full of blue from the blue sky and your yellow turns a little bit greenish from that blue water, hit pause, get some fresh water and get a nice bright crisp yellow. But green, green's not too bad either. Let's get some more yellow. I like the gable to be yellow. Anything you want yellow, do it yellow trim if you want yellow yellow door i've got some yellow frames and again don't worry about going outside the lines keeping everything tidy it's fine i went outside the line many times just doing that frame because it's so thin No one's looking that close. And we're going to be filling the walls in a color. So that'll distract. There we go. Yellow. Where else would I like yellow? Some of this lattice, some of these supports, some of the stairs. Anything you want yellow. I just love yellow. Yellow art, when you look at a painting and it's mostly yellow, it's just like joyous to look at, I think. Get some stairs yellow. You want to have some yellow um, shingles, yellow siding, yellow trim. There we go, got some yellow stairs. What else? A little trim under here. Yeah, if you haven't already warmed up your glue gun, if you're intending to use a glue gun, now would be a good time to start warming up your glue gun for the buttons in a bit. Um, a little bit over here. Hmm. I think that's all the yellow that I want to do, but you do you. Um, yeah, let's see. Here's if you wanted to sort of like pause it again on this screen and see where I've done yellow there. Or just put it wherever you want. Good, and what would be next? Maybe like orange. Yeah, I think orange. What color orange? Nice light orange. Yeah, 
if you have like quite a dark orange and you want a little lighter, um, just add some yellow. Yellow with some of that dark orange makes a nice light orange. So because I did this yellow shingle area first, it is the most dry. And so I have no problem putting the orange right next to it without a bleed happening. But if you're going to do orange next to something that you literally just painted a moment ago, give it a moment or two to sort of soak up a little bit, dry up a little bit, because we don't want too many bleeds happening. You can always like touch it gently. Yeah, this yellow's dry here. The gable. Gable's a little moist there. Where would I like orange? There's a little orange here. What else? Got a little orange sort of on this wall, but is this dry? Yeah, my little supports, my little trim. Pretty dry. I already see some some bits that I didn't paint yellow. These railings I didn't do yellow, but I could do them a different color. What about down here, a little orange? Sure. You want to do blue, red, green, down here, anything. Let's say you do have a bleed happen wet paint touching wet paint and it gets kind of out of control just get a clean tissue clean tissue dab blot pick it up the offending color let it dry and then redo those sections that got a little mixed up but let it dry uh, let's do some orange in here Hmm, I think that's all the orange I'm going to do. I've got some red up here. Yeah, maybe red next. Oh, maybe a little orange near the door. This wall around the door, and I'll do red trim. Yeah, that kind of completes it. Red, it could be pink, purple. What red will I like? Again, you you can check if certain areas are dry. You could you know, lightly touch it. Maybe look at your painting on an angle. If it's still shiny, it's still wet. So this red trim, I'm safe to do this because this yellow is definitely dry. Yep. That's a nice bold red trim. Mm, I love that contrast. You got the yellow, the red, the black all there. Let's do this little teeny tiny itty bitty. Tiny. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I'm gonna do red trim on the all the windows here and the door. 
but then I've got the yellow already here. So it's kind of an eclectic design. Yeah, mine is, mine's drying quite fast. It's quite hot here. It's evaporating quickly, but if you find a lot of bleeds are happening, just take it a little slower, give it lots of time to dry between colors. Hmm, where do I want more red? No, no, let's get them out of red. I could do green, I could do pink, maybe a little pink, purples, yeah. I've got a little pink down this side of the house. I don't know why. Pink there. I'll let that dry before I do like the green here. Let's do purpley roof. So I've got um, sort of like two shades of purple in the roof, darker and lighter. I'll do the whole roof in a lighter purpley color. And then when that dries, I'll probably do a little bit darker purpley color. Any shade of purple. I might go for more of a this is more of a Kool-Aid kind of purple color. Oh, that's very dark. I want to do a lighter. Yeah, just like more water. lighter wash of purple lots of water very see-through you could do a black roof and this little bit over here is also roof lighter I'll let that dry and then I'll put a little bit of darker purple what else um, I do have a little purple sort of like in some of this trim purple and blue if you want or any other color fill in my little rungs, my little railings there that I missed earlier. Good, I'll do my, I didn't get started on some of my green.
It might seem like kind of random, like I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but that's how you got to do it so that areas have time to dry before you come in right next to them with another color. <clears throat> oh, that's is this dry. The red's dry. I could do my brown door or any color door. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a blue door today. Why why do a boring brown door when I could do a blue door? really draws the eye. I like that. This, eh, this, yes, look at that. Mm -hmm. I do some blue shingles, I guess. Could be black, could be any color shingles, pink shingles. I have a little bleed of blue into purple right in here. Blue and purple are mixing. I'm probably not going to fix it. I'll just kind of leave it like that. Yeah, it's not too obvious. I've got a little blue-purple mix here. A little bit here, too. A little blue into the purple. It kind of gives me like like a shadow vibe, like a cast shadow. I'm not mad at it. I'm going to do a little bit of blue here. A little different blue. Almost there. A couple little spots left. Mm -hmm. Blue is still pretty wet. Um, oh, my chimney. Don't forget your chimney. What about a, a green chimney? I don't know.
Yeah, that's pretty cute. Yeah, so, so far, like, my two houses aren't exactly the same. And yours won't be the same as mine. And that's a good thing. We want to see the different individual styles. Okay, just a little bit. Mine's almost done. I just want a little bit in the trim area. What color? Um, light blue, I guess. Yeah, white. You could leave some bits white. There are white parts of a house. A little light blue in there. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Ooh, I will add, hmm, is it too wet still? My roof is still a little wet to be adding any darker purple. But let's see how our yeah, glue's hot. Let's start getting out some buttons. <clears throat> So I've got lots of different kinds of buttons. Um, you could start arranging them without gluing them. You don't have to glue them right away. You can just sort of like arrange them in a way that's pleasing. If this is dry, yeah, my sky is dry. I think I'm gonna take the upper tape off, the very top tape, gently. Pull that. So if my buttons are kind of going you know, out of the picture, they can go right on that white part. Yeah, and this is pretty dry. Dry enough. If your paper is still a little damp, kind of cool and damp, it means there's still water like inside the paper. You don't want to pull your tape too soon and risk ripping, but I'm a daredevil. So far, so good. But if you can, if you have the patience to wait a little longer for yours to be fully, fully, fully dry, do that just to be on the safe side. But so far, so good here. Yeah, so because I had the tape like fully on my paper, not just like a little bit. And this is smaller too. This one's smaller. This one's bigger, but with wider. Whoops, I got a little rippy here. My paper's ripping, so I'm going to pull from the other direction. Minimize the damage. And then we'll get to glue in some buttons. It's going to look so colorful and unique. Okay. The rip isn't so bad. Can't hardly see that little rippy here. Yeah, so... Yeah, have your balloons like going like out beyond the edge. It could be like kind of even like up, up here, you know? Yeah, I'll probably do sort of like a layer of these Amazon buttons and then I'll probably accent with these, ooh, look at this gold, there's a fabric one, accent with some special ones afterwards. That's my plan. That's my plan. A bunch of these. Yeah, black. I think black adds nice depth. Okay. Yeah, if you want to like fully map out all your buttons, 
before starting to glue or just kind of go with the flow. I've got the hot glue. You could get some uh, crazy glue, super glue. I like to kind of spread them out. Like not have like, you know, a whole bunch of blues all next to each other kind of thing. I'm starting with some black ones. And I think the more that you add, the more you overlap them, this is going to have so much more depth if you have lots of buttons. If you only have, you know, maybe 20 buttons, arrange them the best you can. sort of see that pencil line that I had made earlier through the paint. Green, yeah, green's nice, nice and bright. You could just do your favorite colors. As it starts to get more and more filled in, they're going to be layered on top of each other. Starting to fill in. Hello. Yeah, right off, right off my paper, even. That's kind of cute. It's like coming out of the frame. Of course, if there's any kids following along with us today, you're getting a grown up to help you with the glue gun, right? Let's hope. Here. That color would be good 
they're purple, blue, purple. I do want to get some of the unique ones in here too. Fill some of the gaps. What about the white? There. The blue. Uh, Maria asked, where do you get the print? Um, if you're referring to this image down here, we made this ourselves. Um, you, you are able to rewind the live video and you can see us uh, going step by step creating the, the house painting. Okay, I think that's a good amount of like these bigger buttons for now. I want to get some of my these kind of crazy unique buttons out. But we can go back to these colorful ones in a bit. Let's see. All kinds of neat stuff like this one. It's like a fabric covered button that's going to go in. Where's that gonna go? Right in the middle. This one. It's like a gold caged thing. That's going in. Mm, right there. Yeah, layer them. Layer them. Square. Who said you can't have a square balloon? I need more glue. Ah. Where's the square one going to go? Right there. Um, what the, what is this? This is A button with papayas carved into it. I'm not sure what those are, but it's going on. It's got like a unique texture. So even though it's like all black, it still is interesting to look at. I think they're papayas. <laughs> what else? Tiny ones, shiny, kind of metallic. Maybe purple. What about purple? This kind of dark purple. Uh, yeah, try to kind of have bigs and smalls and different colors. This is like teeny tiny. I don't want to burn myself. Let's just put a dot of glue and put that right on there. Teeny tiny one. Um, this has a cool texture. It's like Maybe like a wood grain thing. That's going on. Right. Yeah, filling those gaps. Clear. Even clear ones are kind of cool. This one. Clear with like a little rhinestone, I guess. Uh, right in there, right in there. There you go. It's got like a tiny little rhinestone right there. What's that? Like a peachy mother of pearl thing. That's going on. Right in there. All these stringies. 
And the strings are the bane of hot gluing. All these stringies. Cute. All right, Sonia has a question. Yeah, it doesn't lay flat. A lot of the buttons that I'm grabbing <clears throat> have that. Let's grab a really big fat. Um, okay. So here's like a metal button, and he's got this nubby on the back. But this has so much layers built up now that it's kind of raised. So I'm just going to kind of put that one up against something that's already raised. So like this white one is quite raised up. If I put some glue on the back next to his little nubby. And then I kind of jam it up next to this raised one. He's going to stay pretty flat looking, but he's quite raised off the page. I've just kind of glued it kind of next to his little white buddy here. But it'll be hard to frame this particular piece, guys. <laughs> you might have to do like a shadow box from all these raised buttons, but shadow boxes are nice. Yeah. It's quite sticking up. What else? How many more can I fit in here? What do I need more of? I think a little red one. I could go forever. I think I'll just fill in a few more gaps. Here and there. Um, this is kind of like, what would you call that? Kind of like a trillium design on there. Because it's like a three petal thing. I don't know. It's unique where I'm going to put it. With the square buddy. There he is. With his little square friend. What else? Let's get something really interesting. Uh, no. Shiny. Sh oh, whoa. Shiny purple, but it's got this like something going on in the middle. That's going on. Right there. Hmm. And then I like to just sort of hold it up, hold it like away from you and decide like, do I need more blues somewhere? Do I need more small ones somewhere? Uh, more black ones? Does it have a pleasing shape? I like a nice rounded shape. But again, you could do any shape that you want. Maybe you did like a, a big round cluster like right here. Off some stringies. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the, with the color and the arrangement. Let's finish off a little bit more down here because we left the roof kind of half done. I've got that light wash of purple, but I want just a little bit darker. Maybe on those little stripies. Bring those little gaps. Yeah, it just gives it a little bit more depth, a little shading. And I did mention a white paint pen. 
or white acrylic with a thin brush and you can make little lines on your window. So on a diagonal, like two or three diagonal lines per like window pane, always on a diagonal, just to give it like sort of the illusion of glass, which pen will I use? Maybe this pen. Right on that scribbly black. But if you don't have a paint pen, um, yeah, just a thin brush and your acrylic. Or what if you have like a white out pen? That would work. The pen's got to wake up a little bit. There we go. Like a little angle, maybe like one, two, or three. Just a quick. And if they're all the same angle, it works best. A little teeny tiny one. Yeah, just those teeny lines just give it that small little optical illusion. I did have, look at this guy, just one lonely little balloon out here. If you want to add like a lonely guy that escaped. I I got a little teeny one, like a tiny. What do I got? Oh, this would be so funny. This little stripey guy got away. <laughs> You're going to be cutest. Right there. This little stripey guy got away. Right. Where's my pen? Oh, little string. This little guy. Cute. What else could you add to this? Birds in the sky. Um, Keep building up your balloons to be nice and 3D and really dense because you need a lot of balloons to float this house. Um, what else could you add? Maybe a little bird like even sitting on the house would be funny. Um, what else? An airplane? You can do an airplane in the sky. Um, Canada geese in a V formation flying by would be hilarious. What else? Let's add our signature. That's for sure. Let's do that. I'm going to put it right in the corner here. I just like doing my initials. Initials, sometimes the year. You can have it like here. You can have it on the white part. Maybe you want to hide your initials somewhere in the house. Like on the edge of the house would be good too. Anything you want. Yeah, Nancy says, a bird on the house would be so cute. It's hitching a ride. Awesome. Yeah. Get a shadow box. I would frame that nicely in a shadow box. All oh, those buttons. Well, I'm so glad that these buttons got like a second life. So just in a bag their whole lives. Super. I would love to see your versions of this. Um, we have two Facebook groups. So one of the Facebook groups is called Artist Palette Painting Slash Drawing Support Group and Free Events. Um, the other Facebook group is called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. This has watercolor in it, so it totally applies. You can join both of those groups or either of those groups. Post a picture, share with everyone. We are all uh, beginners, intermediate. I don't even call myself an expert. We're all very um, supportive of one another. You won't see any negative comments there. We'd love to have you in our group, or maybe you're not comfortable sharing it publicly. Publicly, You want to maybe email us a picture. I'd love to see it. Private message us. 
We'd love to see it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get all the uh, notifications when we go live. And uh, like this video, share. And uh, this video will be available forever. So maybe tonight you were just watching and you'll do it uh, a little later or maybe even next month, next year. It'll be here forever. Got some more comments rolling in. Cute. You're welcome, Barbara. Yeah, take your time. Finish it uh, whenever, whenever, Sonia. <laughs> Self date night, I love that. Let's see if I miss any comments up above here. From Delaware, welcome. Val's first time, awesome. And Erin is from Springfield, Oregon. Thanks for joining us. Nancy's in Tennessee. Yeah, sort of all over. I'm up in Canada. I'm in London, Ontario. A little more north. All right, any questions before we log out here? Questions about maybe this one, any of the events I showed you earlier, anything at all. Or uh, email us, message us, any questions. Not too many rolling in. All right, well, uh, I wish you guys a lovely rest of your evening and uh, a lovely weekend. And happy painting, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye now.